Okay, the next uh, speaker is uh, Professor Chen on phase field prediction of domain evolution mechanism and discovery of transparent PMNPT crystals with ultra high piezoelectricity. three things in with two hands. Hello. Well, thank you very much and thank the organizers for the, for the invitation. Uh, yeah, indeed, I would like to uh, talk about our recent work. We uh, use phase field simulations to look at the domain structures during uh, AC polling of a PMMPT crystal and how we use that result actually to discover that such a crystal can have both very high piezoelectricity and also uh, perfectly uh, transparent. And uh, well, these are the uh, co-authors, uh, but I'd like to point out uh, the main contributors, uh, uh, Bo Wan, a grad student, actually he's uh, sitting here. He did most of the simulations, actually all the simulations and also uh, Professor Fei Li, who spent three years at Penn State, now he's a professor in Xi'an Jiao Tong University, and he uh, was the one actually uh, uh, put together all the experimental work. Uh, so before I uh, start, I would like to give uh, a one slight introduction to uh, piezoelectric uh, effects. Uh, this uh, mostly uh, from the review article of our co-author Su Jun Zhang, who is now at the University of Wollongong. Okay, well, for piezoelectric effect, the direct effect is when you apply a force or mechanical force that uh, you will produce uh, electrical signal or electrical charge, and mathematically, say hey, they apply a stress field, can produce electrical displacement, and the, the quantity which connecting this apply force and an electrical response is a piezoelectric effect. And you can also uh, do the other way around, or the converse effect, when you apply electrical fuel, you produce a uh, mechanical strain or, or shape effect, and this is, of course, uh, it's a third rank tensor connecting a second rank tensor and, uh, and uh, the vector. Uh, well, these two uh, nice figures are actually produced by uh, a grad student, uh, Xiao Xin. Uh, he's also uh, here at the workshop. Okay, well, because of this effect, you can, you can think if you use mechanical force produce electrical uh, signal, it can be utilized for sensor applications, and for the converse effect, it can be used for actuators. As you can imagine, uh, there have been a lot of applications from uh, from ultrasonic uh, transducers to uh, underwater sonar. Well, certainly uh, many of these applications, as you can imagine, certainly the bigger, the better, the piezoelectric effect. And if, if you look at the milestones of the piezoelectric material development, you know, from the very beginning, uh, from the quartz, it's done here, but we don't put a scale here. Again, this is from the review article of, of Sujin. Uh, over the years, it's been a three orders of magnitude enhancement in piezoelectric effects. Uh, well now, the question is what's next? Right? 
can we do better? It's been more than 20 years, and in particular, this is one of the questions uh, for this workshop uh, for the last 20, uh, more than 20 years. Right? Can, can computation actually help to achieve the next milestone or the future milestones? So to answer the, there's this question, uh, we have been doing in, in our group, uh, we call it the phase few method. Uh, looking at how the domains evolve during, for example, polling, or how the domains depend on uh, how you, you grow a single crystal, or how you uh, have uh, external uh, constraints. So I'll just give uh, one uh, slight introduction. What is this phase view method? Because it's a continuum description of any microstructural pattern. And we can consider each point in, 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 inside a microstructural uh, pattern as a thermodynamic system. So you can essentially apply thermodynamics or have a fundamental equation of thermodynamics at each point. Uh, then the volume of such a point is, uh, is dB, right? It's an infinitesimally small in the language of calculus. And, and this microstructure can be described by sort of uh, all kind of uh, uh, fields, can be temperature field, chemical composition, or strain, or polarization, magnetization. So in principle, you can, you can consider, uh, consider all sorts of microstructures. Well, if uh, the whole microstructure, if you want to look at the stability and how they will evolve, we look at the thermodynamics of the whole system. So you have to add up the energetic contributions from local energy and also the exchange energies, or you call gradient energies, just like in micromagnetics, that some of you are more familiar with. And also the interaction, the longer range interactions uh, among the microstructural elements, and this can be very long range, and it's really the competition between the short range interaction, the long range interactions, that give you some of the fascinating microstructural patterns, in particular in ferroic uh, systems. Now, how do we uh, evolve? Uh, well, usually uh, a microstructure evolution involved evolution of more than one field, but typically we can assume that those fast evolving fields are at a steady state or near equilibrium or uh, quasi equilibrium conditions and simply just evolve the low, uh, slowly evolving fields. And some of these uh, fields that uh, I consider fast. Of course, it depends on the time constants. For example, the mechanical uh, displacements or elasticity, uh, we're assuming there's an elastic equilibrium. Uh, usually also we're assuming electrostatically they are at equilibrium. And also uh, if we involve magnetics, also micro, micro, uh, magnetic static equilibrium. Or oh, basically if you have an evolving microstructure for each microstructure, they are at a low equilibrium. Uh, the advantage is uh, not only this automatically couple this multi-physics from chemical, thermal, electrical, mechanical, uh, magnetic uh, contributions, but also you can isolate you know, how each contribution, uh, how important each contribution to the microstructural evolution. And that's one of the advantages compared to if you're using a, a, a you know, more uh, atomistic calculation, for example, it's, it's more difficult to turn off something. Uh, well, I try to put in this one uh, slide because I understand most of the computational people here are on electronic structure calculations. I just want to tell you what we do is not that different from what you do in terms of mathematics. Uh, so from this uh, Kornsham paper, this, uh, the total energy functional of, uh, of, of uh, uh, electron density. So you have uh, this uh, interaction term, essentially electron, the ex existence of electrical potential. You have a Coulombic interaction term, local energy, exchange energy, right? But now if I look at uh, a polarization pattern or elect electrical dipole density pattern, this is like a domain structure. Uh, and we do, uh, if we formulate this energetics, it's within the phase field, you have almost exactly mathematically equivalent. We have the interaction 
effect. Huh? Polarization with electrical field, you have, a, you have a long range interactions, dipole dipole interactions, you have a local energy, you have exchange energy. So uh, both of these actually density based approaches, even the solutions are actually very similar. We use those, we solve those uh, equations in Fourier space. And we even, uh, for this approach, if we built a uh, software package. Now it's, it's commercialized part of it, which is with uh, user-friendly input tools uh, connected to databases. And you can also uh, construct initial domain structures, or you can incorporate domain structures from experiments or from previous uh, simulations. And you can also carry out high throughput calculations and this can be run, uh, although the codes are native to Linux, but you can run uh, on a PC or Mac. Uh, so far, we have modules available uh, to compute effective properties of any microstructures. And also, uh, uh, the uh, ferroelectric module and the magnetic, essentially uh, micromagnetics. Also, we have nice tools for data visualization, including images, and animations, and also we can uh, store the output images into a database for later, for example, for, for machine uh, learning. Uh, also, I'd like to point out, we just uh, have a DOE project to, uh, to produce an open source uh, software based on Facebook, but it will be focused on uh, quantum materials. It's a small project trying to look at uh, 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 ultra-fast uh, processes, topological textures, and also uh, mesoscale structures in strongly correlated systems. Try to couple electronic and structural order parameters. Okay, I think one of the big questions really for doing computation uh, is how we can move on from, or actually move from fu fundamental understanding to provide prediction and guidance. Uh, this is true for computation in general, but also in, in for phase field method in particular. For example, we have been spending time developing models for different material systems, processes, try to reproduce what people see experimentally and try to explain uh, and then understand why they form from thermodynamics and kinetics based on simulations, and sometimes we try to use uh, simulation to test analytical theories for simple systems. And we have been uh, quite successful, of course, uh, uh, but how we can now go from there to predict and discover new phenomena or mesoscale structures, how to uh, guide experimental synthesis and growth and to optimize properties or combination of properties. So uh, the examples, uh, for understanding, for example, these are uh, domain structures uh, for bismuth ferrite. This is a, uh, essentially a quadra junction of four domains. There's a two domain structure of bismuth ferrite thin fumes, and we can reproduce beautifully. And we can understand why they form this way. And also, uh, this is not a published figure. It's a very, uh, quite a few years ago when Ramesh sent us this uh, picture on uh, strontium titanate, uh, titanate super lattice uh, is actually very complicated uh, polarization distribution. We were able to also reproduce. Again, this is not published. But uh, now, how, what about uh, prediction? And I'd like to uh, uh, briefly mention some of the examples uh, that actually we did predict uh, missile scale structures, such as the polar uh, vortex lattices in this uh, the titanate, strontium titanate super lattice, and also help to guide the optimization or actually the, the dramatic increase in the piezoelectric response of both PMMPT ceramics and single crystals. And even, uh, even you can use this to optimize composites when you have polymer and ceramic uh, composite materials with ceramic particles embedded in composite. So this is one slight example, as uh, I mentioned, it's, uh, it's a, a collaboration with uh, Romesh and Lane Martin's group. Actually, Lane is sitting back in the, in the loom. I just want to show you, actually, this, uh, the missile scale structures. We did actually predict from the phase view simulations, including the initial uh, uh, vortex lattice, 
In the strontium, uh, in the lead titanate layer within the super lattice, we were able to construct uh, you know, like a phase diagram how these local polar structures vary with the configurations of super lattice. And then you end up, you can actually have two phase or, or, or two phase states of, let's say, a twin structure and vortex lattice, which was uh, I mean also uh, the work with Lane Martin was published in Nature Materials. Now, if you change the substrate, change the mechanical conditions, you can also even here again, we actually did predict the formation of these uh, skirmium bubbles. If you, if you actually squeeze the super lattice by putting the super lattice on the strontium titanate uh, substrate, and as a result, also give for you these unusual properties because within the skins of these uh, skirmium bubbles and within the cores of this vortex lattice, they actually have negative uh, capacitance. And the, the, uh, also, uh, this example is when you take a, such a two-phase mixture, usually it's, it's located in a diagram when you have this stable twin structure in the middle of the vortex structure. Uh, if you take such a two-phase and hit it with a fast uh, laser, as uh, st fast stimulus, you can all even form a transient we call supercrystal. Okay, well, this is uh, uh, essentially, say, the, the missile scale polar structures. But what about properties? Can we actually help uh, improve properties? So this is an example. We were able to achieve record high piezoelectricity in uh, PMM, both ceramics and single crystals and actually guided by phase view simulations. So in this case, we look at the, you know, we have heard quite a bit of polar nano regions and uh, heterogeneities. Here we basically introduce a structural heterogeneity of nanoscale regions with different polar symmetry with the fellow electric matrix because this is a, this is a fellow electric and this is a, a relaxer. So it's like a composite also. And try to, uh, look at the low temperature uh, dielectric response. Indeed, the low temperature contribution are mainly from these polar nano regions or, or, or this local heterogeneity and matched really well with experiment. Now, this is a, a, a try to, to explain the contribution from uh, the polar nano regions to the dielectric uh, response. Of course, also then the piezoelectric response. Now, we took that then we, we look at the different amount of uh, microstructural heterogeneity and just simply look at the loss, at low temperature loss, okay? So it's, it's and certainly the, 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 the larger the loss at the low temperature, you get a, a higher piezoelectricity. So experimentally, all the, uh, uh, we have to do is actually look at different dopants, just measure the loss. Whichever dopants give you the uh, large loss will give you the high piezoelectricity. Now again, when we're talking about the loss, it's actually low temperature loss. And indeed, so we actually pick, because the smellium dopant has the highest uh, a, a loss, uh, we were able to uh, synthesize the ceramics with the record high piezoelectricity among all ceramics, and even build this into a, 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 a device, a needle-shaped device by the USC group, and showing a better performance in both bandwidth and also uh, insertion loss. Now, uh, even more recently, uh, our experimental collaborators, uh, the, the group of Fei Li, Shrau, and, uh, Tom Shrau, and, and Su Jin, they were able to grow single crystals in Tom Shrau's uh, uh, old company, who recently was sold to a Japanese company. Now, the single crystal. Again, with the smelium doped, which I identify by, by uh, guided by simulation, actually 90% increase in piezoelectricity compared to 20 years ago, the original uh, crystal. So if we look at the milestone uh, here now, guided by phase field simulations, we, we identify the smelium doped the PMMPT and actually doubled the piezoelectricity, nearly doubled. It's, it's, it's a 90% increase for the last 20 years. Now, we uh, uh, actually, there, there, there was a report uh, well, it's in a patent about seven or eight years ago. You can actually uh, even further increase piezoelectricity by doing something very simple. Rather than pulling a crystal using DC field, using AC field, alternative uh, current electrical field. 
And according to uh, John Yamashita in his patent, you essentially almost double the piezo electricity without changing anything to the crystal, without changing composition. So that was pretty fascinating. Uh, so uh, now, recent year, there were quite a few uh, uh, follow-up works, right? for example, Xiaoning Zhang from NC State, also, Fei Li, well, as I mentioned, he was at Penn State from 2015 to 2018. And indeed, uh, you know, there was, you, you actually get better. Just by changing from a, a DC to AC, for example, this is the original unpolled. Of course, it's not piezoelectric. If it, all, the average polarization is zero, DC poles right here. Now, if you, the, the first cycle of AC is very like a DC. Of course, you get similar result. But if you keep polling, Keep a cycle, you get an increase. And also from the work of uh, Fei, actually, he did many, many samples. Indeed, there was improvement. If you look at those piezoelectric response compared to the DC port, not doubled, but still very significant, from 20 to 40 percent. And if you look at the literature, you know, the, the explanation, okay, all the existing works indicate with high domain density are responsible for the enhanced piezoelectricity over DC pole crystals. Okay, they even have figures to show, say, if you look at AC pole, if a DC pole say, we have more domains. And this is a PFM with a piezo response force microscope, but just look at the, the surface. Now, the reason they claim, I think, for, for us is largely because of the early work from, uh, from VADA, uh, WADA, uh, on bearing titanate, for bearing titanate, indeed, uh, there was a measurement of D33. Uh, if you know, this WD is in the, the domain size. Actually, if you go to smaller domain size, there's an improvement. But he even uh, did uh, a step further. He said he predicts you can even increase dramatically, although never realized. But because of this idea uh, from bearing titanate, when you pull a single crystal of bearing titanate along one, one, one direction of a tetragonal crystal, which is, so the polling direction is non-polar, you form a domain called engineered domain structures. Okay, but uh, here is pulled along all one direction of rhombohedral crystal, again, it's non-polar direction. So everybody thinks, oh, must be the same because of smaller domains. And there were actually many, many reports claim exactly the same thing. High domain wall density give you high piezoelectricity uh, using a simple uh, uh, method, in this case AC compared to DC. Well, for us, what we want to know now, actually, well, phase field simulations come in, and we want to look at how AC pole domain structure evolution is different from DC, okay? So this, uh, uh, this is a small little animation so it's, uh, from DC pole, this AC pole for DC. We just have one cycle increase electrical field, hold, and just drop it. And then for AC, we make a triangular, we just cycle. Okay, so well, let's look at the evolution and how these domains evolve. So for the DC, we just stop here, you know, you form some layer struct, by the way, this layer, this horizontal domain, that 109, 109 domain walls of a rhombohedral crystal, they still did a 71 degree domain walls. For the cycle, you keep a nuclei and grow uh, back and forth, so they keep cycling. Uh, as you can see, as you increase uh, the number of cycles, you know, there's no, no, no more dramatic changes after a few cycles, okay? Uh, but, and if you look at the domain along the, this direction, there's not much change from DC to AC. They're pretty much the same. But if you look at the horizontal direction, they actually grow bigger, not smaller, which means all the previous claims, well, I would say at least inconsistent with our simulation. And, and, and if we also try to do from 2D, and extend to 3D, also we change the boundary conditions from constrained to a stress-free. Now stress-free, you can actually get single domains along the horizontal direction. And this 3D, that's not much different, right? So, and also we look at energetics, or is that at each cycle, energy decrease, so that actually makes sense thermodynamically. But then uh, the results contradict with all existing reports. Uh, so uh, we try to do now uh, our own uh, experiments. As I mentioned, that was really uh, Fei Li's group's work. 
rather than using PFM, because PFM is a surface sensitive technique. Just look at the first surface, like 10 nanometers within, uh, 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 from the, uh, near the surface. Right? So we also, we, because of the simulation, we actually now polish the surface more carefully. You have to, rather than just cut it and look at it, but you have to polish, get rid of the surface region. And if you now look at this, this is a, a polarized light microsco uh, microscope uh, observation for different uh, cycles. If you look at the top, these are the, actually the, the domains, domain walls. Actually, the, the domains become larger, exactly like we predicted. Right? And, and this is also, we look at different frequencies of polling from as low as, as, low as 0.1 hertz to 100 hertz. They're all showing single domains. Now, if you go even higher, then the piezoelectricity is getting worse because the, the domains cannot follow if you do too fast. And also now if we look at that, this is uh, the illustration from the simulation. This is again 109 domain wall. This is 71 degree domain wall. But if you look at the principal axis of the optical indicatrix, okay, that the ellipsoidal, across this domain wall, the, 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 the long axis is actually the same. But if you look at the 71 degree domain wall, they are different. So which means light can go through 109 with, without reflection, but 171 actually do reflect. And this is so based on this, we say, hey, maybe we can also look at the birefringence uh, of these uh, two type of crystals. So this is unpolled crystal using a birefringence imaging microscope. Uh, this is DC pole. Now you can see all these domain walls. These are 71 degree domain walls. Now if you look at AC port, this is just three cycles. So it's very easy to do. And almost already much, much bigger domains. And if you pull more, now almost this single domain. Again, it's totally consistent with, uh, with our simulations. Oops, what happened? Uh, it just go, go. No, no, no. I st see, I still have. Uh... <laughs> I know nothing about the system. Uh... My apologies. Well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll continue uh, talking. Uh, also, we look at the cross sections actually using the uh, birefringence imi uh, mi uh, image microscope. Uh, again, the DC pole crystal and AC pole crystals show very similar scales, around micro mi one micron. It's actually pretty small. And now, the, also, uh, now we measure the light transmittance. And indeed, if you look at the visible light region, the OEC pole crystals are almost nearly perfectly transparent. And the DC pole crystal is actually opaque. And that's usually you see uh, from uh, other experiments. Those crystals are opaque because of the domains, uh, the domain walls, because of this uh, uh, 71 degree domain walls which are actually uh, reflecting, uh, or, or, uh, reflecting light. And the, the crystal still uh, has actually uh, the AC pole crystals still have very high piezoelectricity because it still have this uh, uh, 109 degree domain walls. The orientation is still actually along 001 and 001 direction. If you just even look at the single domain anisotropy, actually has the highest anisotropy. And we did also phase field simulations actually looking at the piezoelectricity as a function of domain size. Okay, now we got it. Okay, so already talked through this. This is a horizontal direction. Oh, this is, uh, that's, that's fine. So I can, oh, thank you. So I'll, okay, here we are. If you look at the cross section, you see this is DC pole, this is AC pole. So this direction is more or less the same scale. Again, this scale is, is much bigger, 20 uh, microns, but uh, the thickness is around actually one micron, right? Uh, now let's just do a comparison. Well, I don't need the... 
I don't need this. Can I just the full screen? Is it? Oh, well, uh, let's just compare. You see now we have this SEM picture. Images also show how this layer structure is from the AC port. Now the DC port, again, you see the, a, a lot of domain wars. And also, uh, we actually, oh, thank you. Look at the, uh, look at the X-ray diffraction. For the uh, DC pole, you, you see uh, because of the small domain, you get uh, the more diffuse scattering. Now uh, for the AC pole, very sharp uh, diffraction spot. Now, uh, very uh, recently also, we now even also saw a PFM image look like the same as we predicted. Totally uh, different from existing uh, claims. And again, I mentioned that we actually try to calculate, say, hey, what about the piezoelectric response? You get the domains actually bigger, but is that bigger or uh, better? Because there were also some theoretical calculations for piezoelectric response. Also, most of them claim A, smaller is better, but not for these rhombohedral crystals. Right? So we just look at the different domain size. You can look at the dielectric uh, permittivity, which increase when the domains become larger. But the, uh, 71 degree domain wars. Uh, this is a piezoelectric response. So as you can see, the D33 along O1 increase with 70 degree, uh, 71 degree domain size, which means the bigger is better. Okay, and this is actual uh, experimental measurement. As you can see, this uh, piezoelectric, uh, this piezoelectric response of DC port compared to AC port, about about 30% increase. And also look at the uh, electrochemical uh, mechanical coupling factors. This is still excellent. Actually, it's uh, 0.94. Uh, if you look at optical properties, and this is a DC port, this is a C port. Uh, now, uh, uh, this is just recently, uh, about two weeks ago, published in, in, in Nature, and there was a uh, a nice illustration, actually, in this nature uh, news and views for the 71, uh, for the DC pole, you have this 71 degree domain walls reflecting light. And now you have this AC pole, light can go right through. And now this is actual measurement of the transmittance comparing the, the AC pole and DC pole. So this AC pole, these are the DC pole. It's much better. And now this is a Exp comparison of, of experimentally measured properties between AC port and DC port. So this is by refringence and in enhancement, also the piezoelectric coefficient response. So both, actually AC polling give you better properties. This is actual crystals. This is AC port, there's a DC port with different thickness. And you can see, you can see right through. Uh, again, uh, this is just uh, published maybe about 10 days ago. Now, what are the uses? Why you, you want transparent crystals? Well, but you can imagine, right? You can, you can convert this electrical and mechanical energies or signals. Uh, for example, you can even build uh, maybe a robotic device which is not visible because you can create motion which is transparent. Or you can think, of a, think about uh, have a screen, touching screen, you push it, and now you automatically generate electrical energy. But also, this is one of the applications, is uh, this uh, photoacoustic uh, microscopy imaging. Right? And this is a work uh, from a, a assistant professor here at Penn State in biomedical engineering who used to work at Caltech. They have been working on uh, uh, photoacoustic imaging for a number of years. But they, so far, they're using this lithium niobate crystal, which is transparent, which is piezoelectric. But now if you compare the properties, this is lithium niobate. This is the uh, AC pole PMMPT crystal. Much, much bigger piezoelectric response. Much better electromechanical coupling coefficient. And much higher electro-optical coefficients. So we are looking to actually replace this uh, uh, crystal uh, to see how uh, we'll work. Okay, I'm, not, I'm going to now summarize. Uh, really, I, I, I hope this is a good example of showing computation-guided discovery of transparent crystals. Uh, in this case, of ultra, with ultra-high uh, piezoelectric uh, responses. 
So the enhanced piezoelectric uh, uh, response of the O1 pole rhombohedral PMM PT crystals through AC polling is due to elimination of the 71 degree domain walls and thus with enlarged domain size. Right? And this is uh, in contradiction to all existing uh, literature that uh, says increasing domain wall density is responsible for the enhanced uh, piezoelectric response of AC pole crystals. So, uh, well, in our responses to nature reviews, we are afraid to say wrong, but I guess it's published, I can say these are wrong. Yeah. Uh, so again, this is just illustration of comparison, but also this AC polling, the magic actually increasing the simple procedure, increasing piezoelectricity, but at the same time also produce the new perfect light uh, transmittance or, or light transparency uh, as illustrated here, but also now with this, we can imagine, oops, uh, this uh, is kind of slow. Okay, so I just mentioned they could uh, imagine all kind of applications due to the transparency of these piezoelectric crystals. And then uh, I'll go to the uh, last slide, acknowledgement. Again, these are the co-authors, the main contributors, uh, Bo Wang and Fei Li, and also the support, and also where we uh, do the computation. So I will uh, stop here. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. I was wondering about the temperature dependence of the AC versus DC polling. Oh, the temperature dependence, I just deleted that uh, slide, but I, uh, let me see if I still, uh, there's a cycle dependence. Oh, look, here is the temperature dependence. So you want to pull below uh, the transition temperature. If you go to the transition temperature from rhombohedral to tetragonal, you lost the piezoelectricity. Oh, I mean, not, not lost, but uh, you dramatically reduced. Uh, also, if you go too fast, if you cycle C to 100 uh, hertz, if you go further, you're going to reduce because the domain just cannot you have to shake back and forth, back and forth, but uh, if you shake too fast, the domains just do not have time to nucleate and rearrange or, or the domain side. Uh, other questions? 100 hertz already start decreasing. So this is about 50 hertz is actually the maximum we can go, but uh, you can go as low as 0.1 and just go through five, 10, ten cycles, you already get this enhancement. Other questions? Uh, what, what did everybody else do wrong? Because everybody say the domain size is actually become smaller for the piezoelectric. They did get the enhancement, but they explained it as say, hey, because the domain size has become smaller due to AC. What do we find out from simulation that domains become bigger, not smaller? No, I got that, claim. but why, why, did, why were they wrong? What did they do? Because incorrect? all they rely on the two things. One is a claim from uh, the work from Baron Titanate. Somehow in their mind, Smaller, much, uh, smaller domain size much, uh, must be better because of the domain wall contribution to piezoelectricity. And all they're trying to look for is looking for evidences that give them the smaller domain size. And the PFM, they are, I actually have a slide I removed. They are all over the map in terms of how the, the images look like because the surface now condition is very important also. Uh, so it's, it's because you, you, you really have in your mind, small is better. You're looking for evidence to give you that, your belief. And that's, at least we believe, that's why they were wrong. <laughs> okay. uh, you use the uh, electrodes for the uh, ITO, and if, how it's changed if you change the uh, uh, electrode materials? Uh, that polling thing, uh, I. Uh, I would need to see actual experiments, see what electrodes you put in. Uh, in, in, in this case, uh, we, we need to uh, ask uh, the, the guy, Dr. Fei Li, who actually did the experiment. Uh, yeah, right now, if we want to build actually transparent devices, we need transparent electrodes also. Of course, ITO is one of the choices. But I exactly see how these electrodes affect, uh, I, I don't know the details. What, what happened to the domains for higher frequency of the AC polling? 
Well, if you do really too fast, it will be not really even uh, evolving. Uh, you know, or, or because if it's too fast, there's no time for nuclear, for new domain, then the domain war. Uh, you can just imagine it takes time for domains to nuclear, the domain war need to grow, all this takes time. But if you do too fast back and forth, you will just not really uh, uh, not growing at all, or not even uh, reversing because you do too fast. It's for DC polling, you see, you have to apply, you have to hold for a while. If you just quickly do one, maybe you don't get the polling. Uh, it takes time. Uh, really, the time constant. Okay, one more question. Maybe you said this, but what amplitude field did you apply for the AC polling? Oh, uh, as long as it's below the field which give you, we will, will cause the rhombohedral to tetragonal transition, and they are actually all fine. But if right. you transform to tetragonal, you got a problem. You got decreased. Hey. 